You are listening to the Experience 50 Podcast for Midlife. I'm your host, Mary Rogers. Today is episode 153. Today's episode of the Experience 50 Podcast is supported by my affiliate partner, Creative Live an online learning hub offering classes delivered by over 700 master instructors. Master your craft, your passion, or something new. With creative classes taught by the world's best teachers, including Mel Robbins and Tim Ferriss. Topics cover photography, building self-confidence, blogging, online businesses, financial planning, Adobe Creative Suite, and more. Here's one thing I love about being on Creative Live's mailing list, the free classes. These are not teasers, but full courses. I encourage you to sign up for their super newsletter and you will get a list of free courses that you can take to master something new or improve your current skills. I take at least a couple of classes each month and from time to time, I take advantage of their special deal with a one price for a full month pass. Currently, there is such a deal for $29. Best of all, Creative Live will add to my tip jar each time one of you signs up for their mailing list or takes a class. Thanks to Creative Live, not just for supporting this podcast, but for changing people's lives one class at a time. Use this link, experience50.com forward slash creative. Again, that is experience50.com forward slash creative and sign up for a class or their newsletter. One of my favorite teachers there is Mel Robbins. Thank you so much, Creative Live. So today I'm looking in our mailbag and I got it. This is great. I'm going to share it with you. Uh, I got an email saying, Mary, love your podcast. And after telling some friends about it, we now all listen and then get together once a month to talk about this midlife stuff. It's such a relief to know we are not alone. We all agree that we wish we could come to Traverse City and hang with you, which sounds like an amazing place. We looked it up online and we can understand why you live there. But girl, you need to go somewhere else in the winter. We all live in the L.A. area, so please come here next winter. We'll put you up. That's awesome. Here's our question. All five of us have the same weird problem. We get funky. That is what we call it. We just have a day every so often when we think we suck and we will die alone and poor. It's ridiculous because we're really very successful women, but it still happens and it just drains our souls. What to do? Well, darn good question. And you came to the right place, let me tell you, because I have those days. I've always had those days. And I refer to them as a dark day. So the people in my life know if I say to my husband or my daughter or my best friend, ooh, ooh, had a dark day, had a dark day. They know exactly what that means. (laughs) And I think everybody has those days. It is just part of being a human being on this earth. And I, I really, I thought about this question a lot, and it took me back to what, well, here, I'll explain this. So when I was, you know, early in my married life, I would say to people, you know, wouldn't it just be so much easier if everyone just had an owner's manual? Like, this is how I function. And when you start dating or you get married, you could just like exchange owner's manuals. And it would, you know, it would just cut to the chase. It would save so much time, so much heartbreak that you could say, you know, if I do this, here's how you need to respond. Or if this is happening to me, if I'm in this kind of a mood, if you want to help make it end as soon as possible, these are the things I need you to do. And Like, for instance, my husband's owner's manual would be like one page long. So simple. And I think it's true with most men. It's like, feed me, have sex with me, um, tell me you're proud of me. And that's kind of it. (laughs) I think that's just about all you need to do. Women, 
oh my gosh, we are so much more complex. And it's not easy being us. And I just think because we have these spaghetti brains, you know, men are, you know, all their thoughts and actions fall into little boxes in their brains. And it's really easy. They focus on one thing at a time, whereas we have spaghetti brains. And sometimes I just think we short wire or something or there we get a knot in the pasta in our head. So over time, because this is something I struggle with, I, it's not like a long term depression. I, I'm not a depressed person. And most of the women I talk to, just like Jackie, who wrote me here, you know, they're not clinical, depressed, long term problem people. This is like a one day thing. And I know I have even described it as I just feel toxic. I feel like I have some toxic substance running through my veins. And unfortunately, it does seem to border on a little (laughs) self-hatred. Now, I can laugh because I know that it's just a day. It's going to pass. And I've learned over time how to look this up in my owner's manual. So when you look at an owner's manual, usually the first section is like safeguards, caution, do not do this, do not throw this toaster in the bathtub, you know, those kinds of things. Keep yourself safe. And I would say that all of us at this point in life, we kind of know the basics. You know, it would also be under maintenance maybe of ourselves, which is be sure we get enough sleep because a lack of sleep is going to throw anyone off their game. Put good food in your body. Don't just live on crap. I think that most of us know about that. And the other thing would be, be sure you're moving your body. You know, your brain really needs your physical body to be moving to get all those you know, all those glands putting out what they're supposed to put out and to get oxygen up to your brain and throughout your body. And it's just basic maintenance. So be sure you're doing your maintenance. However, sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, doesn't work or you have a hormone jag, something like that. And it's time to turn the pages in that owner's manual and go to the troubleshooting section. I think everyone should know how to troubleshoot their own moods because these moods are going to happen. Here, Here's some of my best advice. It's what works for me. I've shared this with other people and something here is going to help you. So first of all, name it and tame it. I say, I am in a dark mood that I just know I can feel it. I know it. I have a name for it. And it is, I'm having a dark day. So you girls call it getting funky, which I actually really like. And I might steal that for myself. So getting funky, feeling funky, being funky. Awesome. Here's what you do is you take a third party approach, meaning kind of be like an outside observer of yourself. And when you sense you're having a dark day or you're being funky, it's like, oh, oh, I know this. And once you name it, and some people even go so far in this third party approach to say, Mary is having a dark day. Jackie is funky right now. And that should just flip the switch to do two things. Number one, create some distance between you and your hot mess that you've become. And to put you into recovery mode, which means you know your troubleshooting guide of if this happens, try this, try that, you know, unplug your computer, restart everything, try to do a reboot. You're going to have to do the same thing for yourself. So first off, accept the fact that this is what's happening and it's generated by your thoughts and that your thoughts have gotten the best of you. Your thoughts are the enemy right here. Understand? You are you are going to have to wrestle your thoughts. And if you can't wrestle them, then we do something else. But let's start out with wrestling. 
Remember that your thoughts are created by you, for you, and they are not your friend. Always. Not always. So keep in mind, you created these thoughts and you can choose what thoughts you have. You can choose what you're thinking about. If you are in a cycle of self-hatred, I suck, I, what, what did you say? You're, you're going to be poor and die, and die alone. <laughs> Honey, no, you're not. No, you're not. If you can't step up to the plate and say, all right, these are just thoughts and I can dismiss these. These are ridiculous. If you can't overpower them, then you need to run away. Now, that doesn't sound like great advice, does it? But I absolutely believe it is the truth. And the way that we run away from our thoughts is we create a distraction. We have to get our brain functioning where that voice isn't just in the background, where we're doing something with our brain that says, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm very busy right now. I can't be thinking those thoughts right now. So how do you distract your brain? Okay. Number one advice, do something. I'm I'm listening to an audio book right now. In fact, I'm listening to it with my husband, which is awesome. It's Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. Now, if you had told me 10 years ago that my husband and I would be listening to a self-help personal development book together, I would have told you you're crazy. But he just turned 50, and guess what? All of a sudden, he's developing his deep in and personal side. Ha! <laughs> I love it. I'm absolutely loving that. So in this book, one of the things that Jordan Peterson talks about is how much time we kind of waste with thinking and feeling, and we get this idea that our identity is created by what we think and what we feel. And I love what he has to say about this. He's like, no, you, your life is based on what you do. Your life is about the actions that you take. What you think and what you feel has zero impact, zero impact on your life experience. Your life experience is actually a collection of actions of what you do. <gasps> well, hot damn. I, you know, I say this to you guys all the time that you can get the same piece of information from 14 different people. It means nothing. And then that 15th person says it to you in just the right way and just the right tone with the right story behind it, whatever it is. And it resonates. Well, That resonates with me a lot. It's all about taking action. This is also a terrific way to tell your thoughts to shut up, that you're not doing that right now. I'm in action mode. I'm not in think about it mode. So do something. What kind of things could you do? Okay, you need to have your own list of things that you do that will distract your brain. One of my favorites is music. And and I really fell into this kind of by accident that I was having sort of a dark day. And I went to my iTunes playlist and started listening to, and, and you know, it's different for everyone. There's no reason for me to think that you're going to like my list. But for me, it's like listening to the Commodores and the Spinners and Aretha Franklin and some Annie Lennox or Shaka Khan, these like really, you know, heavy beat, almost disco R&B kind of tunes. Oh, Cher is another one. There's a whole Cher, I believe, album that has always been my go-to to lift my mood. And so have music that gets you moving, you know, not that you're putting on some big stage act, but that actually gets you tapping your foot or it just brings back memories, makes you happy, gets you grooving. This is the kind of music that your brain will just become absorbed in. Or one of my friends, it's headbanger music, like old rock stuff that 
I would never go there when I'm in a dark mood for her. That is just what sweeps her up. And she doesn't think about anything else. She's just totally absorbed in the music. So turn on some great music. This might be hard at work, but, you know, earbuds, earbuds. How about that? Okay, other ways to totally distract your brain. For me, it's cleaning. (laughs) My family is so lucky that I like to clean when I'm pissed off. So I just scrub it out. And of course, the music is playing at the same time. If you don't like cleaning, try doing something with your body. Try being physical. Go out and be walking. Go to a gym. And you're you're not doing this, you know, to be a good person or anything. You're doing it just to get some chemicals, some positive, yummy chemicals going in your brain and washing out all of those nasty thoughts. So a really intense workout or walking really fast, or if you like to run, that's great too. Okay, here's one that is surprising. And when I told my husband this, he looked at me like I was crazy. But it's I've, I've learned what I need, what I need when I go dark. And I told my husband, you know, if you come home And I am clearly not myself. And I might be a little bitchy. I might be a little pissy. But you're, you know, feeling that energy coming off of me that is not full of love. It might even be kind of nasty. What I really need you to do, honey, is I need you to just walk over to me and fold me into your arms and hug me and say, sweetie, I love you. I said, that's what I need you to do. <laughs> and he, he just, he kind of giggled. He's like, are you insane? That is, that is like the last message that I am receiving from you when you get in one of your moods. I'm like, I know, I know, but it's, it's what will calm me down is just someone saying, sweetie, it's okay. I love you. That's what I need. And ever since I told him that, if it comes up that I'm in one of these prickly states, and I can just, I can see the the gears going in his mind. He's like, I know what she told me she needs. But boy, this just seems like 100% bad idea. And he'll st- it's like we make eye contact. And he'll start slowly approaching me because he's so afraid that I'm going to go complete 180 on him and be like, what the hell are you doing touching me? But it never happens. I, I have learned and he has learned Oh, it just, you know, there's something about physical contact with another human being and just holding it there for a while that calms everything down. So if you have someone in your life who you can uh, pass that on to, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, just don't kill the person. Please don't kill the person. Okay. Um, My other thing is sometimes I just, well, this is what I tell my, my husband. I need to get away from myself. I somehow need to get away from myself. And the easiest way to do that is to go be with other people and focus on them. Only them. You you can say right up front, hey, you know what? I really don't feel like talking about myself today. Tell me what's going on in your life. What can I help you with? What What's going on? Well, let me tell you something. No one ever didn't like hearing from someone. I don't like hearing. I don't want to talk about myself today. I don't want to talk about myself today. I just want us to talk about you. We don't say that very often. So when we do say it to someone, oh my gosh, believe me, you will have a very appreciative friend. And 
there's something else that when you are feeling nasty about yourself, do something completely selfless and nice and kind for somebody else. And it could be someone who you have maybe felt guilty for not spending more time with. But, you know, this is especially true. Visit an old person or call an old, call your aunt or your uncle or some mentor of yours or a a co-worker who has retired and may not feel as relevant as they used to. What a gift you could give to them. Just call out of the blue or shoot an email off saying, I'm thinking about you today. How the heck are you? It'll make you feel so much better. Now, if you can't get yourself In the presence of an actual person to do something nice, you can go online and donate to a charity. Think of a charity that you really like and that you've always meant to donate to and just go on and, you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it is, whatever is comfy and probably the higher the donation, the better it'll feel, I'm going to guess, make an online donation. You can also do the random act of kindness. One of my favorites is you go through a drive through fast food place and you pay for the people behind you. You know, it might be $15. It is so fun. It is so fun. I probably do that, I don't know, two, three times a year. And it is, I mean, look in your rear view mirror and see who it is. If it's someone that you you think is going to appreciate it. And the more miserable they look in their car, oh, the better it is. The better it is. Because if they're having a day like you are and someone buys them lunch, whoo, or a young mom with a bunch of little kids in the car, oh, feels great. Now, finally, I am going to give you one thing that you should not do when you are in a funk or you're having a dark day. And that is social media. Don't do it. Don't go there. Oh my God, it's like poison. The last thing you want to do is see all of the, even if they're not happy people, they're being fake happy people by posting, you know, photos and little stories that make them look awesome. It's just what everybody does. We can't help ourselves. People just want to put out a a portrayal of ourselves that we are fabulous. The last thing you want to do when you're in a bad mood is look at people who who are fabulous or more fabulous than you are. Don't go on social media. Absolutely not. The only thing I will do with my phone if I'm in a dark mood is I might go for the distraction of playing a game, you know, something like Bejeweled, which is my favorite, or Candy Crush or whatever, uh, because you really can distract your brain beautifully, just beautifully. Or, hey, this is a great way to wrap up. Or you could take a class online with Creative Live. How do you like the way I segue right there into that sponsor mention? Yep, Creative Live is sponsoring today's podcast episode. And you can show some love to Creative Live, to yourself, and to Mary Rogers and the Experience 50 podcast by going and joining their newsletter list. Go to experience50.com forward slash creative and take a class. Do something to improve yourself, maybe even on a topic that you didn't think was interesting. They have a ton of photography classes and and also video classes, meaning how to, I think they have one right now on how to create family videos. Oh, how fun would that be? So go to experience50.com forward slash creative for that. And I should also throw out, if you are interested in doing mentoring with me, which I am just loving more than anything in the world, it's been so incredible. And the feedback has been amazing. I, you know, and I'll, I'll just tell you right now, something that has been really helpful is that 
For so many people, when they're making decisions about what to do in midlife, either for a big transition or a little pivot here or a tweak there, and they're trying to make a decision, these are the people who seem to really kind of get the most from the sessions with me, is some of us are internal processors of information when we make decisions. Some of us are external decision makers, external processors of information, meaning that we need to talk things through. And sometimes you you just need that other person to ask a few questions to, to bring clarity to exactly what is the question, to what is the decision, and then it all just talks out. It just talks out. And I have found the same thing is true for me. I am an external processor. I don't do very well when I sit with information and a decision to be made. I do much, much better, big surprise, talking it out with someone else. So if you would like to talk it out with me, that's what I am here for. And you can get information about that. Sign up for my um, sign up at experience50.com forward slash mentor. And that puts you on a mailing list that I am using to send people information about upcoming courses and workshops and free seven day challenge. There's a 10 day challenge coming up on different aspects of midlife. But within that email series, you will also see a link to sign up for a session with me. Okay, awesome. You guys are great. I'm loving getting your emails. And oh, the Facebook group. Need to talk about that. The Experience 50 Midlife Community, which is my Facebook group. It's a closed group. I need to, um, you need to ask to join. You answer three questions, which is really just to make sure that you listen to the podcast because I want that to be a space that is just for people who listen to the podcast and want to discuss either the episodes or bring up a topic. And it's it's growing very, very quickly. And we have great conversations. We were talking just this week in the group about adult kids who are acting kind of disrespectfully toward their parents And what that experience is like for us as parents when our young adult kids just become kind of icky, you know? They're just sort of icky and inconsiderate, and the conversation is very interesting. So feel free to ask to join that group. And then once you're in the group, don't just be a lurker. I hope you will um, engage and lend your voice and share your opinions. And I do a welcome to the group post probably, I used to do it like once a month, but now I seem like I'm doing it about once a week. And so new members have a chance to introduce themselves to the group and we go from there. All right, kids, you have a fabulous week. Lots of cool guests scheduled. I think I have like the next six guests already scheduled for the show and it's going to be great you go do something great enjoy the outside you got this bye